Preparing to etch your aluminum litho plate, please refer to the etching charts above the shelf with the gum and the tapum mixtures on it. There is one specifically for crayons, and there is another chart specifically for touche washes. To etch my aluminum litho plate, I'm going to first need a measuring glass with measurements on it. I prefer to use ounces. I'm going to need the container with talc in it, two pieces of cheese cloth rounded into little muffin tops, and a piece of paper towel. So the first step is I'm going to actually talc my drawing. I want something to secure the crayon or any of whatever my drawing material is. I want to secure it to the plate. And what the talc does is it kind of gets absorbed into the grease that the crayon has and makes it more rigid and helps it stick to the plate. I don't need a ton of talc, but I do want to make sure I kind of spread it over the whole plate. And then I'm going to gently pat it in. Real light pressure, just kind of pushing down. Make sure it sticks into the crayon. And you can see on the paper towel how the crayon is lifting just from me lightly patting on it. And the talc should prevent that from happening after it's been patted into it. So now I'll just sort of wipe the excess talc back into the talc container on the edge of the counter. And then using the etching chart for crayons, all of my drawing is a number four and number five crayon. And really the only heavy or medium application is in the hair or other areas where I want it to be fairly dark. So I'm going to use the light crayon etching, which is pure gum or which is pure gum to a quarter tape them. So I have a pre-mixed mixture of quarter tape them, 25% tape them to 75% gum. So I can use this if I want to, or like I said, I can use straight gum, which is what I'll do in this case. So I have my measuring cup. I probably don't need a full ounce, and so those measurements are proportional. And I, I can use probably just a half ounce for this. So if I were mixing um, gum to tape them, I would need to keep that in mind. That that ratio of 25% tape them to 75% gum will grow or shrink depending on the amount that I'm making. For a larger plate, I would probably use a whole ounce. But since this plate is kind of small, I'm just going to use a half ounce. Sometimes the little gum top, the little toppers on the gum containers get gummed up, so I need to rinse that with hot water. And that'll open that back up. So I've talked my crayon drawing. I'm going to pour the gum. And a good habit is always to apply the gum in the borders or some negative space within your image that doesn't have any drawing. And that way, if I have used tape them, the heat from it won't burn out an area where I poured it. I'm using straight gum, so I shouldn't have that happen, but I'm going to go ahead and pour it on the border just out of good practice. And then tape them's not necessarily toxic. Um, or gum either, but I'm going to wear gloves because otherwise your hands kind of pick up the smell. And so I'm going to just lightly agitate the surface while spreading the gum over it. The gum should reactivate the borders. So any drawing that was on top of the gum in the gum borders or pencil marks should lift. Gum is water soluble, so when I'm done, I want to make sure I clean up with a sponge, clean up the countertop surface. I don't want to leave a mess for someone else. And I want to just lightly agitate this for about a minute to three minutes. Because I'm doing straight gum, my etch is relatively light, so I can go a little bit longer. And you can see it reactivating that gum I painted into the highlights of the eyes and bringing those up plate tone or white.
I want to make sure not to rub forcefully within my image, but on the borders I can use a little bit of pressure in a single finger and just make sure I kind of lift off that drawing material that's stuck to it. And that just makes sure my borders print cleanly later on. I don't need to fixate on it though. If they're a little bit dirty, it's probably not a problem because there's still gum border underneath those marks. Okay, so it's been about a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick initial wipe of the plate. And then I'll do a buff down with my second piece of cheesecloth. It's also called a tight wipe, where I want a tight, thin layer of tape and gum left on there. I'm not trying to clean the surface, so I'm not using a lot of force. But just the friction of going side to side or back and forth across it should be enough. Then I can sop up the extra gum that's maybe on the back of the plate. You know, very carefully, not setting it on back on the counter. Then I can wipe off the counter a little bit with that cheesecloth. And voila, my tight wiped plate. After I've finished this first part of the first etch, um, I want to leave the plate for at least 20 minutes. It can sit overnight, it can sit for a couple weeks, it can sit for a long period of time. But I want to get to this stage where I have both crayon and gum tight wiped into the surface and then it's sort of stored. It's, it's in a position to be stored properly and safely this way. When I'm done etching my plate, I want to wipe down the countertop really good with a nice sponge. I want to make sure it's a, not a printing sponge, but just any old sort of cleaning or, or working sponge. My plate. I want to make sure that I do a really good job rinsing out all the items I've used. So my measuring cup with any gum or tape needs to be rinsed out. Do a thorough job. Any brushes need to be rinsed. Sponges. And also, importantly, the cheesecloth. So you can see I have a little bowl of water here. I've let them, been, let them soak after I initially used them, and then I come and clean them out last. So I want to kind of make sure I get any of that soaking water out, and then I'll give them one final rinse under the water, and then I'll wring them out, and I'll snap them out like you're snapping a towel at someone. It should make a popping noise like the crack of, crack of a whip. Obviously I want to make sure the bowl's clean when I'm done as well. Give that a nice rinse. When you're snapping out the clean cheesecloth, you're not aiming at anyone, you're just doing it up and down and it should make a snapping noise just like that one did. And that'll keep the cheesecloth nice and, nice and soft. It gets the last residue of gum out of it. When whipping out the cheesecloth, make sure you grab it by a corner and then you sort of snap it. And a lot of the force is in the wrist. <laughs>